Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see the power of GitHub Copilot and we're going to take a look if Copilot is actually capable of crushing your coding interview and crushing the coding problems on LeetCode. Yes, you're here, right? I'm going to take Copilot and we're actually going to give it some tests and then go through like real world interviews or real world coding problems and see if actually if Copilot is basically capable of solving these problems without much of assistance from us, without basically taking a look or actually solving it by ourselves. We can just like hand it to Copilot and see if it's actually capable of doing this. It, if capable, like if, is it Copilot that really powerful AI tool that is gonna just like take our hands off and it's just gonna make us win coded interviews from now on? Maybe, who knows? Copilot is actually a really, really powerful Git uh, tool or AI tool developed by GitHub and it's actually been released like I think a month ago and I got my hands on about like a 20 days ago and I've been just like putting it test all the time and seeing if it's actually worth it and if the hype is actually worth it about Copilot. And yes, you're here right, Copilot is an awesome tool, literally just like, I haven't thought it will, there will be a tool like this, but yes, OpenAI and GitHub made it possible. Still in actually in a beta, still actually in a preview, and it's a technical preview in here with some bugs and flaws here and there. It's already okay, but what it can actually provide you and will actually assist you throughout as a developer, it's mental. It's actually tremendous, and it can give you a huge help. It can, it can just like, you don't need ever to go like to search for a specific problems like how to how to sort an array using JavaScript or how to reverse that or how to define that or whatever the kind of thing you want to like go and Google out and check out Stack Overflow. No Stack Overflow again, you can just use GitHub Copilot because it literally is, makes a lot of sense. And of course, we're gonna put this into the test and we can just go to leak code and pretty much we can see if this can actually crash the coding interviews and problems and can actually use it all throughout the code editors and see if it's worth it. And of course, we're gonna test it on real world problems and see if Copilot basically can just like take a word, just, just take regular words, like take regular English, regular instructions, and turn it into a real word working code that can be provided through an interview and solve the problem. Let's see it go and, and basically, let's go ahead and jump if to see if that's possible. <laughs> So before jumping into the real code and the real problem solving, actually, there's actually this huge question that's being heard around, which is, will ever AI take our jobs as developers, like as me and you, as developers, coders, programmers, whatever you wanna call them, will ever an AI tool like Copilot be able to basically take our jobs and leave us homeless or something? It's, it's a philosophical kind of question. I know that's, that's completely kind of different, but so many people get, goes and ask this question. And in my opinion, and, and I think what a lot of people agree on this, like developers and stuff. I mean, this is, this is like, it won't happen in the near future. And I, I don't think it will be able and it will be very hard to happen, like in a different circumstances, but it will be very hard to happen in, in basically in the far future. Uh, if, if to better say, but this, this kind of question is very hard to actually uh, have an answer for it. And I would say, in my opinion, Copilot right now is an awesome tool. It's very powerful. It knows a lot of stuff. It has millions of lines of code that is learned from it. There is a huge neural network that goes behind the scenes and empowers the actual Copilot engine and the model, all of their stuff. But still, it, it, it lacks a lot of stuff. It doesn't think like a human. It doesn't have a brain to think like a human on how to code when instruction comes first and all stuff. It doesn't only know code and how to insert code when you actually tell it to insert code. Still, yes, very powerful, very, very powerful, but still there are some huge flaws that needs human interaction in order to be able to complete this job. Without the human interaction, it won't be able to do that and it will be very, very hard, like very impossible uh, to do that and by itself without any kind of like external human interaction and guiding it or having like a developer guiding it through that and basically doing it. Or basically for now, it's just only a tool that assists developers to write better code without looking into the documentation much. This is this is basically the, the main point why Copilot or GitHub Copilot exists anyway. And most importantly is actually to make you a better programmer and of course, solve problems faster so we can code faster and we can get features done faster and we can develop faster. That's the point. That's the whole point why GitHub 
Copilot exist? Just wanna just go through this question real quick. But anyway, so let's go ahead and jump and see if we can crash the first um, kind of, you know, problem in here. And I wanna go like with a simple problem to a very hard problem and see if Copilot basically can take that from lead code's perspective. And of course, problems are all in lead code. Uh, I'm gonna go from like easy to hard and all sorts of stuff and see if like, is it capable? Will Copilot be able to assist us? Will Copilot be able to generate this code? Let's go ahead and see. I wanna start with a simple problem. I'm pretty sure a lot of you knows that. A lot of you have been through like assessments or interview questions about this particular problem, which is binary trees or traversing a binary tree. So what I wanna go here is like traversing binary tree. And I can see here like binary tree in order traversal or pre-order or post-order. And you see like the in order is basically the most kind of common one that has been, you know, 67%. So I'm gonna go with this. Of course, they are all easy. So we can see if this easy problem is like, will Copilot be able and basically how long Copilot will take to basically figure out the, the actual solution for this one. So you see, this is the JavaScript solution. We all know that this is what a binary trees either have a left or right. However, for those of you who are not familiar with, so there's actually a node and each node has at most uh, two child. One is right and the other one is left. And each node of course can have a value and have another one. So this is basically how it looks like. Uh, this is the tree node, it has either a value, so it's like a number, two, three, one, whatever, and it has left and right, and this left and right, or you can think of them as pointers or other trees. So left can be another tree and right can be another tree, and it goes on and on and on, uh, endless. So that's that's basically where it is. And here, what they want us to do, or what I mean by binary tree traversal, is actually you've got a binary tree and you need to like go through the binary tree. For example, you start from one, you read one, you, you print the value like this one, you go like two, you print this two, and you print three and all that sort of stuff. So this is what the output, for example, you give it this input, like one, then null, null basically because this is this is empty and you go through this. And of course there's actually the roots one in here, it just prints nothing and all that sort of stuff. So that's basically that's basically the point in here what I'm trying to say, uh, look how to visualize that and everything. So we can go ahead and read through this and see if this is actually capable of how Copilot basically can take this from our hands and how can be done or basically figure out a solution for this as quick as possible. So I can go ahead and copy this one. I can copy this exact one in here and I can go to the Visual Studio Code in here. I've got already like a project set up and everything. And this project in here is have some setup going like TypeScript with Node.js. So you can run JavaScript Node.js or TypeScript Node.js. So we can, I can basically preview both and test Copilot on both uh, kind of like languages. So we see if you can generate both of these codes perfectly without any issues. So as you here, we got the first file, which is the binary tree.javascript. And I wanna generate this binary tree. So let me just go ahead and paste this one. We got in order traversal, uh, we got a definition of a basic binary tree in here. So I wanted to remove uh, comments of this. I don't know why this code is not recognizing this, but we can get rid of this comments real quick in here. And I need that. So this is what a tree node, this is just a constructor for constructing a tree node. And this is what gonna be like basically passed through this one. So if you look into this, screw you see, I just put a cursor in here and I got Copilot activated, screw you see in here. I got the preview and everything. So this one is activated with VS Code. And as soon as I open up this function, so this function has a pretty good name, right? It has in order traversal. And it already does have um, kind of like, what I would say this, it's, it's basically, uh, like the value, it has like this tree node. So it has the code structure of how, or the data structure actually already kind of like initialized for us. So it already actually popped up something for us. It already gave us a solution or a suggestion at least. I won't say this is a complete solution because I don't know if it's a complete solution, but in order traversal, yes, it looks like an order traversal. And here it returns a result. So it returns like a, a number array so this this looks like it's doing it right so all you need to do to accept this you just click the tab one because this is a suggestion and of course here copilot gives you this suggestion so you can click next or to see the next solution you can go alt um then plus the other one or you can go previous alt plus the open brackets then you accept you click tab or you can click control enter to see like uh, i think 10 
different solutions that you can choose from. But anyway, so let's go ahead and accept this one and see if it does work. So tab, we got this one accepted. And let's go ahead and try to run this one here locally and see what it does. So I'm going to use console log and binary. I can just put tree in here and it can do um, in order traversal. And here, Scurisy already gave us some suggestions. So it already constructs a tree for us. Scurisy, there is a tree node. So let me just get rid of this. So there's always a tree node, and like constructing a tree node inside of another tree node and, and goes and on and on and on. But let's go and see what Lee code does have for us as an example. So we can we can have a point with. So there's one, null, two, and three. Um, so I would rather what I can do in here is actually copy the code. So I don't want to just go into the details and writing all of that because I don't want to make the video as quick as possible. So we can copy this one. We can give it to Lee code and we can go and run the code to see and check if this is a valuable solution. And it looks like it is, right? It's just like, this is the output and this is the expected output. And it traverses this. It goes to one, it goes to two and it goes to three. That's the actual output from the example. Let's go ahead and provide it with an empty array. And I want to provide it with another array, which is has one. So I was going to run this one again. And this is has been generated by Copilot in, let's say a second, it was less than a second, it was like half a second, it was like, I don't know, 400 millisecond, it's ridiculously fast. But it got the job done. And it seems to be working at least with these kind of previews. So what I can do, I can provide other examples, I don't know, I'm not sure what these examples are going to have because um, lead code is going to basically give us how this looks like by the tree visualizer in here, but I'm just going to put some random values in here and try to check if those are good values. Um, let's go ahead, I'm going to put a ridiculously long tree in here, just to give it a test. And this is this is how our tree looks like, right? And if you're familiar with an order traversal, it just basically goes from the left, then it goes and visits basically the, the root node, then it goes and visits the other right kind of tree. So you would see it the same way we did before in here. Uh, like for example, for the one, we did go one, then we go two, because that's the right and it goes to like three or something. Or yeah, sorry, it goes one, then it goes three, because this is like the, the leftmost tree, then it goes to two. So you'll probably know uh, more about this binary trees, but I just want to go in and solve it. So let's go and run the code. And let's see if this is actually capable. Hey, copilot, are you capable? Yes, I am. And there you go, you go the output. And yes, this is accepted. And your runtime is 79 milliseconds. That's crazy, right? I can copy this for one last time. And it can add as many as I want. I can I'm gonna go crazy about this and test this to the bones and see if this is this is capable. Remember, this is this is just an easy problem. So copilot, you know, it's just made it a little bit easier for copilot to generate. So it's not the hardest problem that copilot can solve. So that's why it gave us in us in as very quick, we didn't have any issues uh, solving it, but I'm going to go through this. So two, five, six, 10, two, two, one, five, 10, or 18, no, yes, that's enough. I don't want to go too ridiculous. So let's run the code for one last time before we submit the code. And yes, it is accepted. There you go. Look at it. This is long, huge and 85 milliseconds. Awesome, right? So let's go ahead and submit the code. And this one is going to run it through, you know, tons of different tests. And there you go, we got 79 milliseconds, which is faster than a 54% of submissions. How does that look like with copilot? I'm, I'm personally amazed. Yes, it's, it's literally awesome. And the runtime, like the run time is ridiculous. 79 milliseconds. I'm a fan with this and a memory usage good enough with the JavaScript. Awesome. I don't know. I, I'm speechless, but yes, Copilot did that. And look at the code It's pretty tidy, pretty simple to read. If you go read through this, you can, you can easily read through it. If there's a result, this is a stack it has a clean code. I won't lie. This is a clean code and it did give us all of this and it took advantage of the tree node we initialized here. And of course, using the help of these comments, which we just copied from the lead code and pasted in here, it did the job for us. Awesome. So the first test is passed successfully throughout the copilot. So I'm going to give it 10 
by 10 on the first test on the first binary tree traversal in order traversal test cool copilot now let's go ahead and give copilot a little bit more harder test and we're gonna go with this median of true array or sorted as um, which is just like gives you the median which is um, you know the the middle of these two arrays and of course in a sorted manner so they are already sorted arrays so it just doesn't have to do a lot of overhead I guess and it just look at, needs to give you the median and of course the complexity right time should go with O log of M plus N which is uh, the size of two arrays so if, if they have the same size it's gonna be like a log of N which is a pretty pretty decent runtime complexity compared to the algorithm you actually run in so let's go ahead and see if basically copilot is basically is capable of generating this and or giving us a good enough solution that can fix this problem just you know solve the problem of the median of two sort of arrays so what i'm gonna do again i'm gonna copy this one i'm gonna back here and i got here like another file which is the array median so i'm gonna paste this one and as you see we already got everything in here so as we did before let me go ahead and get rid of the function in here and just like let's say we already like you know created the function we open up the brackets and hallelujah just like uh let's say a second copilot gives us this it finds it like a good enough solution right so they click tab uh the solution should be accepted but there is one flaw about this solution look at this there is this function that is you know doesn't exist in here it should exist but it doesn't exist in here and copilot thinks that is a good solution which if you run this one is gonna throw us an error say oh find key keith yeah i'm gonna say find keith is not defined or you know has been defined or something which is an throwable error which is a bad one and copilot didn't good do a good job from a first catch in here so if you take a look again if you use the alt plus the close bracket to just to cycle between the different solutions that is capable of doing you might find another solution and this might be a good solution why not because it returns that it returns a number this is what we expect to return it takes a nums one nums two both are number arrays of integers maybe this is good but let's go ahead and just like not gamble about this yet and let's go ahead and try one more time there is actually a better way to describe like what you want to do to copilot just to give you the best chance to give you the best results you could you know possibly get and to do that you basically need to use the comment section because that's how copilot basically works use the comments use this this place of comments in here to use verbal english to just describe the actual problem and what the solution is so copilot can mm, use the neural network go grab and take a look on some millions of lines of code throughout the github repositories and all that sort of stuff and come back with a solution maybe that solution will fit better than just this one because right now what copilot is basically using is just using this kind of name of a of an function and tries to go and look for a solution for that which is not very descriptive if you want to make this a little bit more better you can write a better function name that is more descriptive but that could be a little bit ugly because you don't want this very big ugly function names right so i was going to try to do this and what i'm going to try specifically just to make it much more you know sweet and and a little bit better in gambling so I can go ahead and copy the same text that lead code provided us. So we don't have to like get something from our head or something. I'm gonna completely replace this, by the way. So I'm gonna just copy paste this one and I'm gonna save. So this this one way says given two sorted arrays, nums one and nums two, respectively, return the median of the two sorted arrays. And that's that's it, I guess. Yeah. So that's that's the whole thing. Let me just gonna create an, uh, another one. Now I can make a little bit of more description and I can make this what I can say, for example, I can say um, those two sorted medians, which is can be, um, I don't know, they return this two sorted medians, uh, the two median of the two sorted arrays as a number. Okay, just give it a more description that the return type of this function should be a number, right? That could be cool. Let's go ahead and take a look if, it, if that is gonna do a good job. So we're just gonna make or give some time to Copilot. Maybe it can give us a good solution. And I don't know, this is, um, this looks like a good solution, right? It does look for me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and accept this one. So I'm gonna use stamp. I'm gonna accept this one. And this is, 
this is looking like this is doing a good solution and there is actually a, this is the second thing that's what i said that copilot or ai kind of tools won't take our jobs as developers because here as a developer you need to basically take a look on the code just just a quick glance on the code and seeing oh what the code is doing if that code is even right if that code is even gonna fit for that particular problem or not and as far as my understanding is actually doing some fine while loops to loop on both arrays and doing uh, results because i already know the solution for this R problem it looks like this is a good solution i don't know but let's go ahead and give it a test and see if that's going to print a good solution so i'm going to copy this one that i did give it in here i'm going to go back to google chrome and i'm going to just like paste this one as simple as that and i'm going to open up and run the code and there is actually a couple of test cases which is the the already examples we got in here and hallelujah we got some ridiculous i don't know what but this is uh looks nums one nums two it looks like indefined it returns indefined for the output i don't know why that is returning indefined but that seems to return indefined for some ridiculous reason so um yeah absolutely no idea but so expected it should return a number but it doesn't return a number but um let's go ahead and run this luckily and see if that's actually gonna return any kind of number for us so i'm gonna do console log and find medium of two sort arrays i'm not sure what's the exact problem we got so it's one three which is uh the number is one one three and the second is two so i'm gonna do this one right here and see if this is gonna or this is one three right and this should end up like this so i'm gonna run this using node and i'm gonna use where is that array median dot um, javascript and that's yeah that's indeed returning indefined i'm not sure why this is returning indefined but that doesn't seem like a, a really good structure um, or a really good kind of solution for us so in my perspective in here copilot failed from the first result so you might go ahead and edit this function because i'm pretty sure this function is is good enough actually to go for fixing this problem but still there's some modification maybe some some flow goes right into this that is you know making it a low or return indefined so you can go ahead and edit this but what you can find much better is actually to go ahead and look for a better solution so you can just let copilot do the job and basically use the alt and just like you can go through different solutions i don't know um i'm gonna try a little bit kind of a different solution than this one maybe this recursive one will work i don't know let's go ahead and just like save this one because it just like it calls this recursively it looks cool uh run it and we get indefined again so this is uh this is really not cool uh, let's go ahead and keep looking so or is this this is not it we don't want this we don't want that um let's go ahead and take a look on this okay not not this uh, i think i can eat is this it or is it no, no no not this one maybe this one let's try it out we get two okay so if we get two and this is two so let's go ahead and copy this guy this is looking like a good solution just by traversing through and seeing different solutions and trying them okay and as curious in here i'm not even going through the code reading or even minding of reading the code because i just like i'm trying different examples to see if that is actually returning a good one then go to lead code and paste the code and see if that's gonna like you know providing with some kind of like examples or test cases and see if that is actually gonna do any good job or return any successful uh results that's gonna match and yes this is one accepted right this this looks cool so let's give it another test case in here for example i'm going to give it this one two that is with a with a three and four okay and let's go ahead and run this one so i'm going to do run code again and this one should yield or print 2.5 and this is this is indeed returning that so i'm going to try the other one which is zero always always for this copilot because you don't write the code even though when you write the code so you can think of yourself as writing the code 
and now you're taking this code and actually putting it into the test and passing it through different you know test kind of values to see if that is actually going to match and this is a good enough algorithm that's going to you know solve this particular problem and be valid problem or a valid solution so i'm going to run this zero zero should be zero because that's the median right that should be good enough and that's zero and the last one we should two arrays we should return one because the other one is empty and the other one is just one and let's go and run this one again this is the fifth one which is the same thing in here so i'm going to try another one from my hand in here just uh, something ridiculous 10 5 2 5 10 20 uh 5 2 uh, 4 22 33 okay gonna run the code in here and see if that's gonna yield any any good one uh must be no yeah this should be sorted array sorry this just should be a sorted array totally because screws in here all of these are sorted arrays so um i can 5 10 20 30 maybe one, five, 10, 20, 30, 50, 60. I know, that's ridiculous going through this, but I'm just gonna run it through this one. Hopefully if it passes, yes, it does. Now I'm gonna go in and submit the code immediately and see if that shit ain't gonna do any good job. And yes, there you go. You got that in 160 milliseconds, which is faster than 90% of JavaScript application submissions on that particular problem. If you take a look on the number of submissions, this is ridiculous. The number of submissions are 3 million and only got 1 million accepted. And we got ourselves 90% faster. We didn't even code it by ourselves. It was all being done by Copilot. But as clear as see, Copilot didn't figure it out for the first try. So we, it tried to do that, but it needed some guidance for us. So we needed a real world developer to come through and say, oh, you're gonna need some guidance to you know solve this problem, or you need to just take this algorithm that is being produced by Copilot and put it into the test and you know pass its couple of values to see if this is like a valid solution or not, and you can take a look on other solutions. Sometimes what you need to do is basically go through the code. If the code is it looks valid somehow, but it has some flaw that is not returning right. So you can go ahead and edit the code. So you need some decent knowledge in order to do that. So you just like not always gonna work for you 100%, but I guaranteed Copilot can, one way or another, figure out a way to give you an astonishing solution that it can use it for coding interview. And yes, response to your question, yes, it can win you your coding interview, and it can help you a lot. I'm not, I'm not saying you can, or you need to go in and use Copilot to cheat on interviews, none of that. I'm just saying it could help you, and you can learn from it. But yes, this is possible and this is this is really fun. So we got another last test, which is the third one in a row in here. And this is actually another leak code problem, which is the reverse nodes in a key group, which is just a graph. So for example, you've got a graph in here, which one, two, three, four, five, you basically, you give it like a K, you say, oh, I want K to be three. So it goes to the third index in here and you reverse it. So it becomes three, two, one, then the other is still the same, which is four, five. So they got, they got those kind of, you know, indexes uh, reverse. So that's basically the algorithm in here. And as clear as see, we're gonna just like solve this using Python. So we're not gonna always stick to the old JavaScript that we always do since basically GitHub Copilot is actually supportive of different languages, like a huge set of languages, and more particularly, which is so powerful on, and it's actually basically JavaScript, TypeScript, there's Go, and there is, I think, Ruby, and the other good one is Python. And that's what I'm gonna be to test, which is the Python version three. And this is this is basically what the solution is. So we're gonna to try to copy this one as we did before, and we put it into the test and see if this is if this is actually capable. So I'm gonna just like control C, I'm gonna copy this one, and I already got some decent uh Python 3.9 is creating it, 3.9.6 already running so we can go ahead and put it in test and see if that is actually going to run and if copilot is basically going to give us any good solutions from this particular part in a quick way so already got this one so let me just go and comment these uh i don't know why this is auto in common not working 
but uh, let me just get rid of that. And that's already there. Of course, indentation in Python it can kill you or save the day for you. So whatever you wanna you wanna think of it. But there you go. So this is the list node or the list node, and which have, of course has a value and it has an X. So you can think of this as a linked list, or you can think of it as a graph. I would rather think of this as a linked list. So this is a linked list problem. And the solution here we need to reverse is that before the k int in here, so it could be three or something. So we can take the first three indexes and reverse them back and leave the others alone without any reversing. So the solution is already a class. I don't like classes. I would rather solve it in a particular kind of in a way of function. So that's much better for copilot to understand what we are doing. So always make sure you, you just like put it as a, a single handed function and let copilot do the job then you can copy the code produced by copilot and of course integrate it somehow into your code if you're using classes or different scenarios so that's what i'm trying to do in here i don't need self because that's not a class anymore and as you in here we got the list node here being returned for us and everything we got this one as an int if you're not familiar with python 3 or i think 3.5 they introduced the list or the typings hint so now you can put int and you can put actual typings which is absolutely awesome i'm loving this feature in python and it makes the code much much more cleaner to write code in python but more particularly but anyway so that's what we need in here we already defined this so let's see if this is gonna give us any kind of hints from copilot so i'm gonna basically remove this one i'm gonna rewrite it so sometimes you need to do that for copilot to basically understand what you're actually doing so i'm gonna do like list node and this is what's gonna return and as Chris in here already gave us, it already gave us this this good kind of code that looks that looks pretty decent actually. I won't lie to you. Um, so this this looks had is none return hand. I don't know. This looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it to the test. I'm gonna accept this solution. Why not? This looks pretty good. But since this is actually a list node, then of course a list node is not an array or not a list on Python, so you can't print it, you can't see actual action. So what I can do, using the help of Copilot again, we can tell Copilot, oh, we need another function. We don't know how to traverse a linked list, and we don't know how to traverse it and basically print the values of the whole linked list. How can we do that? And Copilot is gonna answer, yeah, that's easy. I know, I'm, I'm a huge stack overflow man. I'm a million lines of code, and it can help assist you through this. And to do that, I can put, for example, define, and it can do like, friends do what there you go it, it just gave us the solution that's crazy I, I wasn't even anticipating this and there you go copilot gave us the solution without ever knowing about this and i just like i did print and he already knew the actual context i was working with that's amazing and that's one of the amazing features i like about copilot it does take consideration as or of the context you're actually working in. So if you're working with different huge files that has different variables and all this stuff, it knows what you're working with, it knows the different variable names, it knows the different functions, and it's gonna suggest to you alongside these functions. It's amazing, there you go. So we got the print list in here, and this is gonna help us, Scrisi already takes a list node, it's gonna help us print a single list node and see how that does. So let's go ahead and test this one. I'm gonna, for example, create a list node in here, and I'm gonna create um let's go ahead and i don't, don't want to do this maybe that works i'm not a, a basic python fan but i'm going to create a list node in here for example i'm going to say one and it's going to have another list node it's going to take two and basically just a chain or a chain of list node uh so this node that's gonna be i think there's four and five so i can use the help of this I don't need, I don't need those, okay, those are not needed, yeah, I don't know why those are not being deleted, okay, so we can, we can, we can close with a parentheses in here, there you go, so we got that, and what I can do is print list, I think, what is that, print list, okay, Let's print list and we just give it the ls in here. And that's not only it. We need to, of course, run the function, which is the reverse key group. 
then the reverse key group would give it ls. And for example, I want to reverse from two, but let's see what the actual leak code is basically provided as a problem. So here for this one, it refers to key two. So it starts from zero, of course, this is a array or list. So this is what it does. So let me go ahead and actually run this and see if that works, If see if the copilot solution works. So I'm gonna do Python three reverse nodes dot pi and can open a file, no such file directory reverse nodes dot pi. And um, it looks okay. So we got one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So two, one, four, three, five. I'm not sure why three is here. Maybe because I missed that. But anyway, so let me to just to make sure that this is a good solution or not, I'm going to completely copy this, this solution that is being provided by copilot. I'm going to go down here, have some indentation to it. And I'm going to completely paste this one. And of course, go, um, it was going to need some indentation. So I'm going to run the code and see how it does. Okay, so an indent does not match an outer indentation. Uh, so this is an F. And this is another F. Yeah, it's ugly to indent it, the actual Python code. There's always a, you know, a bit of the ass. But where is this? Next, reverse the key group. Yeah, so this is just basically going to do. Um, so we need to use self reverse group because before we didn't use or run it on a on a class. So that's what I meant by doing some modification. But still, there you go. It's it's actually converting that and it's actually doing it pretty good. Uh, it's actually being open as expected as it is, and everything. So that looks that looks pretty sweet. Maybe we can just gonna copy this one again and test this one with a three and see if that is actually gonna pass that maybe what do you think guys? Accepted. And as you clearly see, for the actual code in here, we didn't take much. We just like created the function, we put the cursor there, and compiler did the job. It took basically two seconds, if I remember right. But that was so fast, that was blazingly fast. And it did the job, and it, it got it right from the first time. We didn't need to do any, any kind of special treatment. And if I submit the code, this is the moment of truth to see if, if, if that test is going to pass. And yes, indeed, it's going to pass. And it's like 52 milliseconds, which is faster than 49%. That's mental using the Python three. I mean, that's crazy. And Copilot did it again, and he saved the day for us. So my final thoughts on a Copilot: If you are thinking about Copilot, oh, that's ugly. That's gonna make you a bad developer. It's gonna make you a really not productive developer. That's not right. So you can you can choose to use it yes or no. And sometimes it gives you a really good solutions. I chose or I use it in a big production project that you know I use it in like a huge kind of project that works millions or like I say tens of thousands of lines of code. And it wasn't even lagging. It was always performing enough. It was always suggesting what I what I actually was expecting. And it was always good. Whenever you need a function, I don't need to go to like stack overflow and spend like two minutes looking for a solution where copilot can give me the best solution and it can you know swap different solutions and it can choose the solution and say yeah you can go with this one that's super good i like it i absolutely admire this and there's of course some issues i'm gonna say several issues around this and needs to be fixed because this is a preview and a lot of people have been like you know contributing to this and providing feedback so that's pretty awesome that's that's pretty promising that's actually copilot is gonna improve a lot and the next version or the official version is gonna be 100 percent much better than this one where already this one is crashing it as you see it crashed the leak code problems and we got three leak code problems already solved only by copilot by the github copilot we didn't need our brain or our knowledge to do that anyone can do that right so anyway guys thank you guys for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed this video that was was a kind of a long video compared to other videos doing this copilot thing kind of review but honestly what i like to do myself is actually go take a tool or take something a framework a tool a library whatever and just like go a little bit deeper into it and understand the actual 
outcomes of using this and how to use it properly and actually testing a real world scenarios like this one on leak code and see if it does actually crash and it's crazy with your own eyes it did and it solved us the problem and that was crazy so without further ado guys hope you guys enjoyed this one and see you all hopefully in the next ones